So a lot of developers struggle with platform support like Xbox or mobile, since it can be really mandatory to basically do it. And I'm going to tell you that the context action service is a pretty useful tool for that and should be rather used instead of normal user input service. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and let's get into the video. And also excuse my voice but I am a little bit sick right now, but I wanted to get this video out for you guys anyways. So what do I exactly mean by context action service being useful? And mostly it comes down to automatically being able to bind one function to multiple key binds from different platforms. And let's make a part for example, and I'm just going to change the material as well as make it a sphere and just change its size. So while having this sphere right here, I'm going to make an example of a function that changes its color and basically just works on multiple platforms. So let's start off by adding a local script into the starter player scripts. And this script I'm just going to call context action. And I'm just going to set everything up like the reference to the part and the local function. So the part is just going to be workspace and then wait for child and part. And then the local function is just going to be called change color. And this function is just going to change the color property of this part. So I can do part.color is equal to the color fee.new and let's just change it into a random value. So first I'm just going to get the random generator and then use the next number method that's going to give us a value from 0 to 1. And basically just repeat it for all of the RG and B values. So while having this function right now, just to test it, I can do a while task wait and do. And let's just wait one second. I can basically just fire this function. And if I do a playtest, it's going to change the color of this ball. So now we know that this is working and let's get to actually scripting with the context action service. So first you need to get the service and we get it like any other service by doing game and then get service method and then just context action service. And now if I just do context action service and then just try to do a method, you can see that we have different stuff like the bind action, bind active, then bind action at priority. And from the name, you can probably guess that this is what binds the user input to the function. So I'm just going to do the bind action method for now. And you can see that there is different stuff that this method expects. One is the action name, then the function to bind, and then the create touch button boolean. And this argument, since you don't have that many inputs on mobile, like you would do on a keyboard or a gamepad, this basically just automatically creates a button for a mobile GUI. So I can fill this method with the action name, which is going to be change color, just like the function. And this action name doesn't really matter when setting the bind action, except if you want to use it for stuff like getting the UI button that I'm gonna be showing later. Then the second argument is the function to bind, which is going to be the change color function. And for now, let's just not create the button. But you might think that there is something not right with this method right now. And you would be correct because we don't have any key binds assigned to it. And that's what this for argument is for. These three dots indicate that it's an any number of arguments that we can pass into this method. So this can be for example stuff like enum, then key code, and then for example e. And you can see that this is already way better than just having user input service, and then basically just checking if every single input was the enum key code and e. And if I basically just do a playtest right now, and just try to press on my E button, you can see that it's going to change the color of the sphere. And right now I'm not checking the state of the key code, so if I just press it, it's going to change the color twice. But if I hold it, and then let go, you can just see that this function is going to fire. And now you may ask how can I bind this function to multiple key binds, and there is two ways of doing that. One is to just pass another argument, which is going to be the enum.keycode.r for example, so if I do a playtest, it's both going to register the E and R key codes, like this. Or in my opinion, a better way would be to have a key code table, where I'm just going to copy these enums, then put them into the table, and then put the table right here. But there is another thing that we need to do with this, and it's to use a method on the table called unpack, where this method basically just returns all of the elements from the given list as a tuple. So exactly what the bind action method was expecting. And right now the different platform support would be basically as simple as adding another enum into the key codes table. So for stuff like the gamepad, I could do enum that key code that button for example L1. You can see that this is a gamepad input from this box right here on the right. And to present this right now, I actually need to find my controller, so well be right back. 
So right now you can see that I have my gamepad connected. And if I press the L1 button, which is on the left side above the trigger button, the sphere is going to be changing its color. And I don't know if you can hear this, but this is the sound of me pressing the gamepad button. So this is how you can easily implement a multi-platform support basically. And let's also talk a little bit more about the function that we bind to the specified key codes. Because I haven't provided any arguments for this function, but there are actually three of them that I need to mention. The first argument from this function is the action name, then there is the input state, and the last one is the input object. And the action name is a string, the input state is a enum.userInputState, and the input object is just an input object. And these are basically just the types of the arguments. But what I can do right now is check the input state by doing if the input state is equal to the enum that user input state that begin then I only want to change the color of this ball if the person is beginning to press the button. So if I just press on E or R, it's only going to change it once. And last year just talk about the mobile support with context action service. So by default, if I just change this argument to true and do a playtest, this is not going to create the button for me because I'm not on the mobile platform. So what I need to do right now is go to the view tab and then press on the device. And I already have a mobile device selected from the tablet menu. So now if I do a playtest, context action service is automatically going to create a button for me and it's this button right here. If I go to my player GUI right now, you can see that there is the context action GUI, the button frame and the context action button with an icon name and the action title. So if I press on it, it's going to change the color of the ball. And normally if you keep adding these buttons, if I let's say add five of them, they are basically going to automatically align right here. And all of them are going to do the same thing and that's basically because I binded the same function to all of them. And since I have multiple of them binded to the same function, I can also use the action name argument to for example check if it was equal to change color. And with a setup like this, only one of the buttons should work. And you can see that only the one in the center is working properly. And the thing about these buttons is that they are basically just a UI element that you can also customize. This image button is the icon that you can see right now, and this is basically the background of the button too. If I clear the image property, you can see that it disappears. Then there is the action icon that's going to appear inside of the button, as well as the action title that I can just change to whatever, and it's also going to overlay above the button. So I'm just going to copy the context action GUI with only one of the buttons and then just paste it in and move it into the starter GUI. Now this button being right here, I can basically make it for example a little bit bigger by changing the size value. And I can either change the scale or the offset, but it doesn't really matter if I for example wanted to basically just double its size. I can do that or maybe change its scale to be like something around 0.4. And now the button is going to be a bit bigger, but keep in mind that this frame right here is actually a square. So it's possible for you to change the scale to something different where this is not going to be a square anymore. And sometimes you might want to add a UI aspect ratio constraint. But in my case, I'm just going to leave it at the scale. And I could also, for example, just modify its position to be like on 0 and then point, 0.4 on the while scale. So I would say that this would be a good position for this button. And now let's translate these changes into code. So I'm going to make another function and name this one modify change color button that I'm just going to fire after it gets created from the bind action. And I can do local button is equal to, and then I need to use the method to get the button by doing context action service and then use the get button method. And this one expects the action name so I need to put the change color action name right here. And since the button doesn't get created on PC or Xbox, I need to do if not button, then return end. Otherwise, I can change the size to be equal to the udim 2new and then the values that we assigned right here previously. So it's going to be 0 0.4 by 0 and then by 0 0.4 by 0 again. And same with the position. And I can also assign different stuff like the action name and the action title so I'm just going to get an example image to assign to this button. So I can do button that action icon is equal to the RBX asset ID followed by two slashes and the image ID. So I'm going to remove the context action GUI and basically just do a playtest. 
and I got an error. How oh, this was supposed to be that image. So now if I do a playtest, I'm going to have the button with the different size position and the image right here. And you can see that this is working. And there is also a lot of different stuff in the documentation that I'm going to link down in the description and I basically just recommend that you guys read it since I've only shown the basic usage of context action service. But yeah, that is basically going to be everything for today. So go check out my UGC items and again, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. But I hope everyone had a nice day and see ya guys.